don't judge it, just write it first, finish it, then put it up and look at it, you know, after you write 10 more. You know, write 100 songs, you're going to write some good stuff, you know. But if you try to, if you start trying to write, especially when you're trying to write songs, because they're, you're saying things, and as you say things, you're, open, you're, you're opening yourself to judgment. And um, I don't, it's maybe a secret, but it seems to me that guitar players as the bunch are, uh, especially those that pursue high level of technique, probably have some insecurity issues to deal with because oh, sure. they're, what they're doing is, is we are, um, I mean, there's, it's not all, all about that. You know, there's also, of course, the inspiration uh, of the music itself, which is a primary driver. But it's interesting how motivation changes over time, you know. Um, at one time, I mean, who, who as a teenager, who doesn't want to be noticed and appreciate it, you know? Sure. Um, but as you um, continue to mature and go through life, you know, hopefully, uh, it, well, it's not hopefully, it always happens. You know, your motivations change and your motivation levels change. And then you have to keep reevaluating what am I doing this for? Is this what I want to do? I mean, those questions of meaning become. Uh, really critical, and I've gone through them all, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this also brings up a very good point because it's one of the questions that uh, the students asked me to ask you, and the, <laughs> the question was phrased, for someone who taught, has taught so many people so much about music, how is it that you ended up right, uh, breaking the cardinal rule of being in a rock band and marrying the bandmate? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it it didn't work out too well, um, but that's another story. I, uh, you know, I can't say it didn't work out. You know what? In 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 five years, I may look back and and uh, I mean, it worked out in some respects. It, it is what it is, and I've got two great kids, and you know, uh, I've learned a good deal. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna go there with that. Sure, but sure. you're right. It didn't work very long. Um, you know, basically, we went to New York and tr in, in, to meet people and, and knock on record labels' doors and find out what, what was going on. And this comes kind of comes back to our um, to the previous question that I didn't I got off on a tangent. I imagine that. Yeah. So, so uh, we got to New York and we knocked on doors and we kind of gathered month by month, week by week, we gathered this new perspective. And suddenly realized that what we did was totally out of sync with what the country was wanting and listening to. I mean, this was 1993. You know, grunge had just been that had happened. All right. And uh, well, our sound was a mile, you know, the opposite direction from grunge. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, you know, I'm not necessarily that was being the only problem with it, but. You know, I mean, it's it's not bad for what it is. I mean, it's, it's actually it's pretty good, I think, still, although some of it makes me shudder as I listen to it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, can't believe I, I did something. That, that's just so embarrassing, you know, but, you know, whatever. But, um, but yet, uh, well, we went there, and we found out it was totally out of sync. And what ended up happening was she basically decided that, she didn't want to keep doing it. And then I found myself, okay, well, what am I going to do? And, um, you know, I went off from there, and um, I had a brief stint. I was working with Don Doc in California for a bit, and then I was hoping to, to get, you know, my strength at the time was primarily as a lead guitar player, and I was hoping to find some way to get out and play. You know, I wanted to find some kind of a band that I could tour with that, because um, that's something that I've never done a lot of. I'm sure I've, I've done plenty of performance, but not in a, in a very big way and not enough to satisfy me, you know. And, um, you know, I, that didn't come out the way I wanted it to. It didn't end up not happening. And then... Um, so I moved back here and built a studio and house and everything, and then uh, 
decided, well, with the Internet these days, I'm just going to go do my own thing, and I'll write my own stuff and, you know, produce music. And uh, and here's the crazy thing. I gave up on that and everything. And then, a few years later, I wind up meeting Mark, and all of a sudden I'm teaching the guy, and I'm, you know, down there, flying down there and hanging out with him, and we become really good friends and everything. And I'm like, Mark, you know, I got a lot of ideas. Would you help me, you know, with a, listen to them and arrangement and stuff? And he was like, sure, love to. All of a sudden I put a band back together, and it's like this seems exciting and doable now, you know, and I got a whole different perspective now. And, uh, well, here I am six years later. Things happened. <laughs> and, uh, and, but actually now it's actually launching the way I had hoped it would. Right. So it all it all worked out in the end. So. Uh, Troy, I have to, we have to go back to L.A. for just a second because I have another student question. Uh, and that was at your, with your time with Don Dockin. Uh, how was that, like, psychologically? I mean, in a way, you know, you're stepping into the – edge of the stage once held by the mighty George Lynch well I hoped to but uh, um, it, I don't know it it didn't really um, I guess it wasn't the way I work it didn't quite sync up you know um, you know I, I was already at a point you see a lot of people think that guitar playing is you know, like uh, whatever you, wherever you are, you know, that's your, your ability to play. And it's really not like that. It's always up and down. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I sit down and I, I play the guitar a lot every day for a week, you know, yeah, I'll be playing really well. But I don't do that all the time. You know, I do it as I need it. Because there's way, there's so many other things to be done in life, you know. Um, there were times through the 90s you know, once I developed uh, the technique that enabled me to do whatever I wanted, as well as I wanted, or as fast as I wanted to, there was no longer a purpose to practice. So I stopped practicing. And I even sometimes would go six months or eight months without even touching a guitar. Wow. And then along would come a project. You know, here, the purple signature licks, or, you know, I played uh, the hardest one I ever did was in the 90s. It was Joseph Petriani signature licks for Dale Turner's book. And I had to play all these Joseph Piani solos at full speed and half speed. And uh, the guy's good. <laughs> you know, in fact, I want to, if I can be Rumor so bold as to it. say it, yeah, but if I can be so bold as to say this, that to cover someone else's solos really well, note for note, yeah. is harder than even your own because every player develops their own kind of uh, – nobody is equally good on everything, right? You develop your own pet patterns, if you want to call them that, your go-to riffs and stuff, mm -hmm. and you can use those things more and more in your own in your own playing as you make your playing more distinct and unique. And so for – to come out though and grab and assimilate someone else's and do them well, kind of requires being able to play everything he's playing and everything. Now I'm, I'm not saying that the single book plays everything he's playing. Of course it doesn't, but I mean it was a smattering of his best stuff, you know. Right. And um, so obviously I had to practice my butt off to get back in shape. But here's the funny thing: over time, so many times letting the guitar go and then coming back to it, letting it go, coming back. Um, it's it gives me a new perspective each time I come back to it, you know, and it it gives me a new chance to recreate the technique a little bit differently. It comes back way way faster, and every time you do that, it comes back faster and faster and faster. It does. Um, and this, yeah, is, it, this is the point that I try to drive home to the students. We have two breaks during the school year, mm -hmm. and there are weeks, and I say don't play. Because you guys are pushing all year, you're like, push, push, push. Don't play for the week, and they look at me absolutely stunned. You know. Well, you know, having rest and recuperation is part of the process. 